Hey everyone, so today I'm here with a book review. I'm a week back from holiday now and I've wanted to do this video, you know, like almost straight away but I've just got around to doing it now where I wanted to review all the books I read while I was on holiday. So I was there for 11 days and I read five books in that time. Um, which I think is pretty good. Um, that's the main thing I do while on holiday. Obviously, I'm not really on, like, there's no internet that much or very limited Wi Fi. So I sit and read. I love reading around the pool and the beach. It's so relaxing. Um, I just feel like I want to read more now that I'm back because I feel like as soon as I sort of came back from holiday, it's just on the phone again and on the laptop. And while that's good, I like to have more of a balance. So I definitely want to get back into reading. Um, but anyway, this video today is inspired by a good friend of mine and amazing YouTuber MinxLaura123 and her channel's uh, MinxLaura123's Wacky World. Um, that's more of a vlogging channel and she does all sorts on there but also book reviews. I think she does like usually a monthly one. Um, so yeah, this is inspired by her and I just wanted to share the books that I read and what I thought of them and you know, you could pick them up or let me know if you've read any of them. So let's get straight into it. So the first one I read is this one here. It's called Elizabeth is Missing. Now I'll be honest about this one. It was not what I was expecting. I picked it up because I thought it was sort of a young adults book and I, I suppose it is but mostly with young adult books you have young adult characters right teenage characters or pre-teens or something and this is actually about an elderly lady so I was like really shocked when I started reading it now because I couldn't figure out how old she was. Um, but it's an amazing book. I highly recommend this one. I gave this 4.5 out of 5. So I'm rating these out of 5 stars. So I guess it's a 4.5 out of 5. And I also want to rate it in terms of would I recommend it or not. So literally just a yes or no thing to that. And I would just say yes, I would definitely recommend this to others. Um, you know, a book has to be pretty up there, pretty good for me to actually share it with others or recommend it. If it's sort of okay or even just good, I probably won't even recommend it because I only like to recommend like some of the best books that are really you know worth someone's time if they're gonna pick that up. Um, so what I liked about this book, I've got some notes just down here, is that I mean, first of all, um, we're talking about an elderly lady with a serious memory problem, and I just think that's so, like you don't get many books about that, and it's so important, it's so interesting. It just felt really real and cute, and the characters were so nice. Um, I thought the humour was quite good as well, like it had quite funny parts in it, like I was laughing out loud at points and you know it's not really a sad thing, you don't really feel necessarily sorry for the character, it's more sort of almost like you're laughing with her and she's like making light of the situation. Um, my nan actually suffers with memory problems, she's gotten worse in like the last few years and I found this quite relatable when thinking about my mother and my nan and just the way they are together and the, like the jokes there and how my mom gets frustrated with her and stuff. But yeah, no, it's a really good story. Um, I haven't actually said what it's about, that would probably be useful. Um, it's about this elderly lady who has a really bad memory. So she, you know, she forgets, so she forgets when she makes a cup of tea, she forgets to eat, all of this sort of stuff. And she thinks her, one of her friends has gone missing, um, but nobody really believes her. Everybody's sort of brushing it off because they think of her, you know, she's got a bad memory and stuff. So it's sort of like a mystery story, but also really, I don't know, elements of crime and elements of, you know this elderly lady's mind and stuff so it's just really brilliant um i'd say the reason why i didn't give it five out of five is because the ending i felt left a couple of questions um it wasn't necessarily unsatisfactory but i just felt like there were some things i wanted to be a little bit clearer and to be wrapped up but you could argue maybe that wasn't the main point of the book and i think the point really of this is to show what it's like to have this memory loss and it's just a really lovely story and it has got that sort of almost like a thriller sort of element to it where we're trying to find out what has happened to her friend and stuff um but yeah really love that one so 4.5 out of 5 and that is elizabeth is missing by emma healy okay let's move on to the next one so the next one i read is breathing underwater and most of these books are sort of teen sort of books i would say so this is definitely i think more of a teen one and this is about um, a young girl called Freya and her brother Joe died in an accident on sea um, the year before. And she goes to her, where her grandparents live and it's this lovely sort of remote island place and that's where her brother died. Um, and she's starting to think that maybe what happened to her brother wasn't actually an accident. Um, so I'd give this one 3.5 out of 5. Um, so it means, you know, pretty good but not amazing, definitely not as good as the last one. Um, I would say if someone, you know, said would you recommend this or not, I'd probably say no. 
um, just because, like I said, it was good, but it wasn't amazing. So I probably wouldn't, you know, be like, oh, you really need to read this. So that'd probably be a no. Uh, but what was good about it is it was really easy to read. I mean, it's not particularly thick. Um, I think it had quite short chapters and stuff, which I like. And it was just like quite a nice story to read. The characters were quite good and stuff like that. Um, and I like that they had sort of flashbacks to the previous year and to stuff that had happened, which was pretty cool. Um, but the reason why it didn't get a very like massively high score is because I found it all a little bit misleading. We had this idea that, you know, it says at the back here that perhaps you'll find that love and life still exists and stuff like this. But there was like not really much love in it. I find that quite a misleading element to like say that she's going to find love when there's sort of almost a romance there, but then nothing sort of happens. Like she doesn't get with anyone, she doesn't kiss anyone, it's nothing like that. Um, so I just find that was a bit of like a false advertising really. And I found the ending quite disappointing and generally it wasn't that memorable. Thinking about it now, I'm thinking maybe it's more of a 3 out of 5 than 3.5, but it was okay. Um, like I said, I think the main reason why I got the high score is because it was just nice to read and it was nice to read, you know, about the sea and about being on this island while you're abroad. That was probably more of the nice part to it. But generally as a story on its own, it was okay, but not amazing. So that's that one. So it's Breathing Underwater by Julia Green. I gave that 3.5 out of 5 and no, I probably wouldn't recommend it to others. Next up, we do have an adults book called The House. Um, so I've had this book for about a year now and I've only just got round to reading it when I was on holiday. This is by Simon Lelick. So this is sort of a thriller um, crime sort of story here. And it's about this couple that have moved into their dream house and then they find something weird in the attic and then someone gets murdered and stuff like that. So it's sort of kind of your typical crime novel, but it has something more to it than a lot that I've read, which is pretty good. So I gave this a four out of five, and yes, I would probably recommend this to others. Um, I wasn't too sure of it at the beginning. I sort of started reading it. I wasn't too sure about the style or the tone, um, but I did start to like it as I went on. Basically, it's a sort of Gone Girl style book where we're flipping between the husband and the wife who are both telling like parts of the story and like what happened. While in Gone Girl, it's more like almost against each other. Here, they're sort of describing it together. And there's a little bit of like um, difficulties between them, but not as much as Gone Girl. And I wouldn't say it's as good as book as Gone Girl. I really enjoyed Gone Girl. This, I wouldn't say was as good, even though they're quite different stories, just because they have similar styles. I'd say I preferred Gone Girl and that story. Um, but yeah, I thought this was really good. Um, I thought the characters were really interesting. The story was definitely interesting. It had some twists and stuff like that, which I do quite like. Um, and yeah, I just liked some of the characters and you know the events that happened. And the reason why it didn't get five, so the reason why it was just a four out of five rather than anything higher, um, was because like I said, I wasn't too sure about the tone. It seemed maybe just like a bit of a trying to be like Gone Girl. And there were some minor plot holes, things that I was reading afterwards and thinking, but why did that happen? Didn't quite get it. Um, and it seemed a little bit short, like it's quite a thick book, but I don't know, it seemed like it just sort of ended and that was it really. It wasn't like the most memorable thing in the world, but it definitely did have, you know, it was a good story and it was really interesting. And, you know, I like the twists and stuff and the characters, so... I definitely, you know, re recommend it for that anyway. So that's that one, The House by Simon Lillick. Uh, number four is The End of Everything by Megan Abbott. Now this wasn't actually my book. Um, basically when you go to a hotel, often they'll have a little section where they have some books there. I pretty much almost read all of the books I took with, I uh, took four with, and then I had to pick this one up because I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna like run out of books to read. Oh no, what will I, what will I do? Um, so I picked this one up actually from the hotel there and um, I didn't like it to be honest. I gave it one out of five stars and I said no I wouldn't recommend this. It had a bit of potential and uh, it's about these two teenage girls, I think they're like 13 years old and then one of the friends goes missing and it says it's a mesmerising novel about two young girls discovering sexuality, it's about fathers, about jealousy, about secrets, blah blah blah, all of this stuff. It was, it was boring to be honest, like when I'm on holiday, I'll sit and read like all day nearly. So if a book's a little bit boring or a bit slow, I can get around that because I'll literally just be reading because I don't really do anything else and I enjoy that. But this, I just felt like, oh, what is the point? Um, 
so it's about this friend that's gone missing and I just felt like for hundreds of pages nothing was happening it was just like characters talking and that was it really like usually you have stuff about new evidence has been found or there's a new suspect or some scary event happens or the talking to the police it was just sort of fluff it was just hanging around with the family I didn't really get the point of it like it's talking about these girls finding their sexuality and it was weird because the one friend who hadn't gone missing was like I don't know quite close to her friend's father and I thought is there going to be some sort of weird relationship here because it was almost hinting at some sort of dodgy relationship and but nothing happened but it sort of that was quite confusing I was like is the father a predator then like what is all that about and my other criticism with it is there was no twist there was that I thought at the end might, there might have been a big twist or something but literally from the first I don't know probably the first few pages after she's gone missing they sort of said oh I reckon this has happened to her this is you know what what happened I won't try to give anything away and yeah that's what had happened all through the book there was a bit of doubt had that happened had that not but it had so I just felt like there was no red herrings or nothing else to sort of bring a bit of doubt in it was just like oh you could have just summed that up in the first like 100 pages or whatever so it just felt a bit pointless really and also the main thing that really annoyed me is these characters were meant to be like 13 and they were acting like they were nine like when they were talking about stuff I just thought the characterization wasn't amazing they didn't feel like young teens I mean I'm 21 and for me thinking back to you know when I was 13 or whatever I'm sure I knew more or they just seemed like so innocent and so childish I don't know if it's set a bit more in the past but even so they didn't seem like 13 year olds they just seemed like nine year olds just some of the behaviors and the way they spoke um but yeah, that was it really. I'm not going to go much more on about that one. So that's one out of five stars. Wouldn't recommend. You might like it. This is just obviously all my opinions. But yeah, that's that one. Okay, and then the last book is this one. Another teen one. It's I Have No Secrets by Penny Jolson. Uh, this one, another one I absolutely loved. So we've ended on a high, which is good. So this one I gave 4.5 uh, out of 5 stars, similar to the Elizabeth is Missing one. So those two are the top rated ones. I would definitely recommend this to others. Um, so this one's about um, a teenage girl. And so this is another like teen book. Um, probably for older teens. But anyway, it's about this teenage girl. I think she's about 13, 14 years old and um, she's in a wheelchair and she also cannot talk so she's so disabled to the fact that she has no control over her arms or legs and she also cannot talk and I found it a really powerful story basically um, this guy called Dan um, tells her a secret something terrible and she can't do anything about it she can't tell anyone she can't warn anyone she can't do anything so she's really quite helpless but the way it's narrated is so so clever it's sort of it just gives such a great insight into disability and the fact that just because someone's disabled or can't talk or can't move for themselves doesn't mean you know that they're not intelligent or they don't have a working brain or anything like that like people's judgments and stuff um and you know such a just a great narrator i think the writing is really the best part about this um you know all the characters are really good the story elements the mystery was actually pretty good and pretty cool um my main criticism, a really minor criticism, is that just some of the story elements seemed a tiny bit fake. Um, just a couple of things that happened is a bit like that seems a bit strange or a bit like forced in like for convenience or for the story. But those were really only minor things. I just think it's a really clever story about, you know, just about how this girl manages to get through, you know, not being able to talk or anything. And it's really good because you don't feel sorry for her. You're not just like, oh, that poor girl, she can't talk, she's so helpless. You don't feel like that. You feel more empathy, like, wow, how that's so frustrating and stuff. But she's still, you know, you've got a whole story here. You've got all the people around her, a whole family. It's really, really interesting and loved it. That was a 4.5 out of 5. So I'll end that up here. So overall, I would say they were mostly good, apart from that, everything, whatever it was the end of everything wouldn't recommend that one but these two in particular I would 100% recommend these if you want something to read sort of that's got a bit of crime or a bit of thriller a bit of tension there but also really good stories I mean it's strange because they're both about sort of disabilities to some extent you've got someone with a really bad memory loss and someone who's you know um, physically disabled as well so mentally disabled I suppose you could say and physically disabled but they both have that crime element, they're both fascinating stories. So I definitely recommend these two. That one, 
I would go for it. If you like a bit of crime or something like that, I would read that one. That was a weird, interesting story. And then these two, it's up to you really. They're a bit sort of lighter, they're a bit more chilled out, I suppose, but not as exciting as the other two and a bit, and especially this one was really quite boring. So that's my book review. Um, definitely want to do more books in the future. Actually, uh, the other day I was looking all around the charity shops and stuff, picked up a lot of books. I've bought some online, so I might also go through, do another video and go through the books that I picked up and the ones I want to read. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to do more of these. So when I've like read a few, maybe even when I've read like about three, I might do a little review and stuff. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, um, if you want to read any of them, what sort of books you like to read, all that sort of stuff. Please give me a big thumbs up, I'd really appreciate that. And do subscribe if you want to see more of this. I do lots of hauls, I'm going to do book videos, toy videos, all sorts. And I'd love for you to join me and yeah, to speak with you. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!